Welcome everybody to the Falcon One-Shot. On the agenda, we have the Slaughter Act 1 here today. The Slaughter's a really fun little point-and-click adventure game, as you could probably imagine, very, very heavy in the dialogue, as you one might expect from a genre as a point-and-click adventure game. There is a serial killer on the loose, therefore you play the role of um, kind of like down-out-of-his-luck private eye in a sense. However, the dialogue between him and everybody else is really, really witty. It has a really, really dark humor vibe to it. Almost something akin to, like, maybe Twin Peaks as well. We'll go about, like, maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes to show you some of the story here, but I don't necessarily want to spoil too much because in case you want to check it out on your own accord, I don't necessarily want to, you know, give you the entire story here in one go. Not sure how you would sputter. Now he's gurgling as well. Again, humor in this game. Begging your pardon. I guess I am doing the, the English accent after all. Uh, shouldn't you be up in a chimney somewhere? Tell this buffoon to kick harder. <laughs> Let's go with this one. I said, shouldn't you be up in a chimney somewhere? Always the clown, eh, Sydney? Salis, show our friend your sense of humor. Yeah, it's not English anymore. Still laughing, Sydney. That's Mr. Emerson to you. I'm trying not to. <laughs> Let's go with um, that's Mr. Emerson to you. That's Mr. <coughs> Emerson to you, half pint. You don't know when to shut it, do you? Salis? He's not wrong, though. This guy is uh, relatively on the shorter side, I would say. You see, Sydney, this ain't the day to wind up Charlie Finch. Do you know why? It's your birthday? Another beating from your mother? <laughs> yes, let's go with that one. That inebriated... sputtering... mother... <laughs> gave you another beating? Mrs. Finch's drinking habits ain't not of your worry. No, I'll tell you why. That ugly mug of yours intruded on my dream last night, and I take particular offense to that. Intrusions upon my dreams. The boss likes his dreams. <laughs> That's right, Salas. <laughs> so, you can imagine my displeasure when I found you playing bad credit in my gambling house. That you'd have the nerve to do such a thing after last night's intrusion. Teach him to keep his nose out of my dreams, Salas. <laughs> this boss. The boss likes his dreams, he says. I'm over here getting my ass kicked into. So what have we learned? Terribly sorry, but I didn't catch any of that. To stay out of the dreams of deranged infants. I like that one. Ugh. He's gonna sputter. He's sputtering again. You... Scrubber. Kick him till he shits his ribs. Oh, that's quite a beating right there. And once again, I plunge to a new depth. Having my internal organs reshuffled at the command of a child. I suppose it's as good as dead as I'm likely to receive. No. What the blazes is that? Oh shit, son. Boss, it's... It's the Ripper! Let's get the hell out of here. Doesn't quite look like a Ripper to me. Hey, baby. You can rip me whenever you want if you catch my train. <laughs> Not really sure what that means, honest. That's a Ripper I like coming after me. You poor soul. You needn't worry. Those cowards have gone. I have a carriage waiting. Where do you live? I live at 21 Drummond Street, Somerstown. Ugh. You'll have to come back to mine, yes? Well, 
That's one way to get picked up. You know, you don't wait till the last call, you just wait to get your shit kicked in. Have a beautiful damsel come over here and save you. Works out pretty good, I would say. JF Swanton 17. So, so far, a uh, game by Alexander Francois. I believe this is a one man operation as well, so Alexander Francois is taking care of the art that you see, the dialogue, music, so on and so forth. So, it's a one man operation for a fact. Really, really cool. I actually really do enjoy the style of the game as well. St. Thomas is not far from here. No, hospital. As you wish. I cannot say I blame you. So even though it's kind of like, you know, pixel art, it's actually done in a really nice fashion where it's like, you know, pleasing to the eyes, not like you know, this is a jagged, raggedy mess. Why would a man seek trouble in a night like this? I suppose you have your reasons. You could literally see the guy bleeding in the background too, like there's drops of blood coming out of his face. Pretty good stuff. Not far to go now. Was it all a dream? I have my clicker. No clicker is yet. Well, at least I'm not bleeding anymore. That's good. Nope, no dream indeed. There's my red-headed damsel. I'm the, I'm the one in distress this time around. A touchless rogue, perhaps. Oh, you're alive. That's a matter of opinion. How are you feeling? Considerably lighter. Several organs lighter, but nothing that can be popped back into place. I assume I have you to thank for that. How did I get here? I carried you in with the help of a disgruntled cabbie. You were on the receiving end of a rather thorough thrashing. You must have really twisted his knickers. Ah, the big oaf was just following orders. It was a hell-born urchin that ordered that thrashing. Not a fan of children. Never underestimate the wickedness of youth. Did he have a good cause? Everyone feels they have a good cause. Though I suppose there were certain circumstances which have placed me on his less forgiving side. Well, I'm sure you'll be back on your feet in no time. And diving into certain circumstances again, Mr. Sidney Emerson. I feel I've yet to earn the Mr. Sidney Emerson. A peculiar name. Are you an inventor by chance? An inventor? No, I don't think this guy's an inventor whatsoever. Unfortunately not. Though I did once tie washcloths to my cat's paws. So that he would clean as he walked. <laughs> yes! Should do that myself. That's simply genius. Why, thank you. If only my mother had encouraged such inventive behavior. And what is it that you do? I'd have thought the man in your line of work would have guessed by now. Ah. You are, after all, a private detective? Ha! Perhaps you should be my apprentice. How did you know? Just a guess. I must have rifled through my pockets. Ah, oh, that she did. And might I hazard a guess that you're not sprucing up for a midnight ball? No, Sydney, I'm preparing for work, as you very well know. Lady of the Night! I assume you need me to leave. You needn't bother. I keep my living and working quarters separate. In fact, you're the only man to have slept in my personal chambers. I don't suppose the men do much sleeping in your line of work. Hi-yo! <laughs> I got nothing to say here that one. I apologize. Though that was ungentlemanly of me. You never claimed to be one. Ha <laughs> ha! Ayo in return! I'm just teasing, Sydney. Compared to most of my clients, you're a knight of the realm. Sir Emerson, it doesn't quite fit. 
especially after I've been made to look the damsel in distress. A disgraceful reversal of the god, given roles. How will our young knight live with the shame? That's not what I... Laughter follows mere mention of his name through the streets of London. To have been saved by a lowly strumpet. For shame. Relatively humorous and well-delivered. A generous review. Ha! You've a well-honed tongue. I dare say you were raised far from these streets. You're not at work now, detective. Get some sleep. We can talk when I return. Nonsense. I don't need any... Oh, he's gonna sputter again. Well... Maybe 40 winks. Good man. And that's what I mentioned. I, the dialogue is actually really witty between the characters, so it's a really, really fun adventure in that regard so far. Be careful out there tonight. Now, I don't want to play spoilers myself, but as you could probably imagine, I did mention there is a serial killer on the loose, so... You might want to, you might be able to put two and two together with that. And here's that whole Twin Peaks thing I kind of mentioned. It's really weird, surreal shit going on in the background. So here's where you can actually start moving around now, inspect items and whatnot. Let's go over here and talk to the fish. What's the good word? Even a breadcrumb trail won't lead you out of this one. Alright. Let's check out this upside down valve. I have a feeling it's purely ornamental. For your intents and purposes, it is. Alright. Can't check out this bell over here. What about the bucket? I can hardly float up to it. Can't you? Hmm. What about this book over here? Oh, something dropped. He always picks up the book, The Fool. Turning it over in his hands like a Neanderthal, he attempted to read words in a hand unintelligible to him. Can I get a light over here? I'm afraid not, old chap. Budget cutbacks again? Something like that. You know, it reminds me a lot of that um, Batman animated series episode where... Bruce Wayne wakes up and his family's alive and <laughs> the way he finds out that he's really in a made-up world by, I forgot who it was, Mad Hatter? Mad Hatter, I think it was Mad Hatter. But he finds out that he's in a made-up world, artificial reality, because he can't read the books. Like, all the books do not make any sense. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and read or find out what this is over here. Picked it up. I'm not sure what that is. Let's go check out our... Cinema machine over here. What are you supposed to be? A slide projector of some kind? I guess so. Oh, I found a slide. There you go. Slide projector and a slide goes hand in hand. A contraption primarily for the amusement of children. The magic lantern finds its target audience as he fiddles with the slide, shooting its gaze upon the wall. It's a spooky tree. Such striking features. Yes. Yes, she has, hasn't she? Huh. I think that might be the girl that saved us. So we have a cord that just dropped here. Pop this open. No. Freaking out, dog. Ready to go? Perhaps a Persian wilderness. Don't you have somewhere to be? I suppose I do. I can hardly leave without a sun hat. Sun hat? Oh, I think that's where you have to... Oh, right. It's been bricked up. It's warm enough as it is. And we come over here, get some sleep. And I'm pretty sure as you progress through the game, that scene right there continues to go forward, progress forward and forward as you go along over here. Bang, bang. No one's here. Bang, bang. And we start chapter one. 
Now, we'll do a little bit of maneuvering around over here. We're going to start wrapping up here pretty soon because, again, if you are interested in the game, I definitely do want to play spoilers for you. But I want to at least show you off the prologue. That's not too bad. Police, open the door. That's a relief. The police! Open the door! There's no one in, you adult! Where's that bastard landlord with the keys? I think that's my cue to leave. I'd better get dressed. 53 seconds later, no more, no less. Alright, so now we have to make our daring escape. Here he comes. Now, what is this over here? Chamber pod. Oh, I think I know what goes on in there. <laughs> I'm not touching that, yeah. No kidding. What about this chest? It's locked. Alright, so meanwhile, we kind of find a way to get out of here. They're going to be over here chit-chatting away, so you can kind of go and read that. We have a dresser over here. Um, there's a lot of stuff to interact with in this game as you progress forward. What I like about it is that not everything is, you know, necessarily important to the story or to a certain little quote-unquote quest to, you know, progress. But there's a lot of ambiance in the game, a lot of little tidbits and just lore in general, which is, you know, relatively good. There's a lot of dialogue to read. Technically, that's what I'm saying. So let's try to get out of here through the window if we can. That one doesn't open. This one over here has a lock. One of the things I will say, though, is I wish that things that are interactable with are a bit more... Um, I guess obvious, I guess, you know, because check this out here. It's rusted shut. For instance, like right now, you can see my little crosshairs, but if I go over the chest, you'll see a little bit of a glow. But, you know, it's still not too apparent, especially for, like, brighter areas like this. Like, if I move over here, you can see you can kind of lose the glow on brighter items. So it's easy to see on darker items, but on brighter items, it's a little bit harder, so... I would probably touch that up here a little bit, just to make it easier for some people to have a harder time, you know, seeing stuff. So that's over here locked in. It's rusted shut, if I'm right. Yeah. So, we need to be able to crack that open. Let's find out what's happening with this lamp. Here's where I pretend that I haven't done this before. Oh, I'm not sure what to do, guys. We have a lamp. Now, we could use the lamp over here with the lock. And there's going to be a little bit of a trigger point for this. I'll unscrew the oil cap, and then you can use the oil to unrust the lock. Pop this open. There we go, it's unlocked. We are supposed to put the lamp back in its place because you know what? It doesn't belong to us. That lady was nice enough to save our life. I'm not going to steal from her. No, 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 dog. You need to... Unless you are supposed to... Okay. He'll probably do it by himself. So let's go over here to the window. Open that up. I'm not going anywhere with my coat. <laughs> I'll pick that up. I like how the guys over there, the, the fucking police, are still arguing with the landlord. Trying to figure out a way to get inside. I'm pretty sure the landlord trips on his way up the stairs at some point as well. The finest cut this side of Saviel Row. And let's see about getting the hell on out of here now. Can we do that? I better put the lamp back. Oh, so it is automatic. Gotcha. But again, you don't want to steal from this woman that saved your life, you know? What kind of gentleman does that? Now to make my flawless escape. Nah, not so flawless after all, Mr. Sidney Emerson. Alrighty. And I do believe we'll probably start wrapping up here. I know that I really haven't shown much. I just really wanted to I'll thank her later. Wanted to show the prologue, really, in case you guys are interested in this type of story. I don't necessarily want to play spoilers and show everything what's going on over here as well. So, if you definitely did enjoy it, though, I definitely encourage you to check out the description below. Did I say definitely a few times there? I'm pretty sure I definitely did. <laughs> no, but really. Description below should have a link to the story page itself. If you want to check it out in your own accord, do so. Really, really fun witty game so far, as you probably noticed. Um, and the story does indeed take a little bit of a sinister turn, but it's done through a very dark humor type of way, which is actually really endearing. I will catch you next time.